All right, everyone, this is a big one. We are going to talk about functions and we are going to talk about that how your functions should be small and more important, your functions should just do one and only one thing. Very, very important. And this is something that you should definitely learn at a very early age, at the start of your career, because this is going to be the difference between a lousy programmer versus a good programmer. So let's go ahead and take a look at this function. So first of all, we have this post structure, which contains the ID, title, and body. Okay, it's simple. We have this fetch post function. You pass in the ID. It creates a URL. It performs a request, HTTP request, using URL session. It gets the data, decodes the data into the post structure that we looked at earlier, unwraps it right here, and then display it on the screen. You can see the output is displayed right over here. It's not much, but you can see that in the view controller, there's a view, and we are simply injecting or adding a label, UI label, as a subview and it displays the title. You can update this code to add the body also or something else if you want to. Here's the code that actually calls fetch post at the bottom. And we are using the playground live view to show you the live view on the right hand side. Everything works, but going back to the function and looking at the function, what do you think the function is actually doing? And how many jobs this function is doing? I'll give you three, four seconds to look at it so that you can see what job the function is doing. All right, so the function is definitely making a URL session request call. That's the number one thing it's doing. And the function is doing a second job also, which is creating the user interface. Now, this is a huge problem because later on, if somebody says that, hey, I want to display this not on an iPhone, but on an iPad or Mac, well, we can't really give them this fetch post function because every time you pass in a post ID into fetch post, guess what? It's going to create this UI. So that is the main problem with our fetch post function. It's doing two jobs, not one job. So now the question is, well, if it's doing two jobs, it's not doing one job, how can we make it better? How can we implement it better? So let's go ahead and create our fetch post, or the improved version of the fetch post. So the whole point of fetch post would be to simply fetch the post, decode it, give it, and return it. Return the post, the decoded version of the post. Now, you can argue that, oh, okay, it's doing another, it's decoding also, and it's doing this we can go into minor refactoring and like a micro refactoring, then we can create another function, but I don't want to go into that much detail. I want to give you like an overview of how we are going to dissect this function fetch post and going to make two functions out of it because it is doing two jobs. One job is fetching the post and the second job is making the UI. That's two jobs and a function should just do one job. So the first thing I'm going to go ahead and create will be an enum to represent the network error. So network errors can be, uh, well, bad URL, decoding error. Maybe you didn't get any data. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and create fetch post function. Just like before, nothing wrong with that. Post ID. All right. So you're going to pass in the post ID. Now this is an asynchronous function, meaning it is going to perform the URL session shared and it's going to perform an asynchronous request. I can't really return from it because if I return, it might be too early and the post might be empty. So what we're going to do is pass in a completion handler, escaping. So this is a closure that we are going to pass in with a new result type in so four. We're going to pass in the post and we are going to pass in the network error. And this is not really going to return anything, so void. There we go. All right. 
So now the fetch post is going to take in the post ID and it's going to return a closure. Now let's first go ahead and create the URL. There we go. You can see immediately the use of our network error. If the URL is invalid, we're going to fire completion. And in the failure, we're going to send in bad URL. Great. Now we can go ahead and use the URL session part. So URL session dot shared session dot data task with URL. So this one passing in the URL and then data response and error. And always don't forget to call resume or it's not going to do anything. Okay. So now we make the request, we get the data, we have to go ahead and make sure that there is some data. So I'm just going to go ahead and use the guard let. We get the data, but this is optional. So I'm just going to use guard let to unwrap it. If the error is nil, if the error is not nil, then we're going to just fire completion handler with failure saying that there was no data. Maybe the server was down or something bad happened that we didn't get anything. Next up, we need to decode it. So post equals to JSON decoder dot decode. And we are decoding a post, so post dot self and passing in the data. Now the decoder or decode function can actually blow up. So we're going to use the try optional. All right. Okay. Now at this point, we have the post, but we can go ahead and unwrap it. So let's go ahead and unwrap this. And we can fire the completion and success with the post. Perfect. Now, probably when you fire completion with success, you want to display the post on the screen. So it might be a good idea to wrap this around with dispatchq.main.async and fire in the completion over here. Now, if you're doing this again and again, like if you're doing this three or four times for the failure also, then perhaps it's not a good idea to wrap it over here with dispatchq.main. Uh, probably it's a good idea to do it on the client side when they're consuming the service. Else, we're going to go ahead and say completion. And I'm going to say failure with decoding error. Probably the decoding failed at that point. Now, if you look at this function, which is fetch post, it's doing only one thing. It is literally just fetching a post. It's making a request to this URL, passing in the ID, getting the post, decoding it, and then giving us the post. It's not responsible for displaying the post. For displaying the post, I'm going to go ahead and create a completely separate function that will be displaying the post, and it will be called display post. You can see the display post is not fetching anything. You simply pass in a post and it displays it. Now, the beauty of this is how you actually call it. So instead of doing this part, we can go ahead and say fetch post, post ID. And I'm going to use trailing closures over here. So we will get the result. And now we can perform a switch on the result. We will have multiple cases. One of the cases is success. We will get the post. And once we get the post, we are going to go ahead and call display post like this, all right. And the other is for the failure, something bad actually happened. So we can go ahead and call failure and we can go ahead and call error.localize description. So this is much nicer because what we have done is we have fetched the post and we have given the opportunity to the client to if they want to display the post or whatever function they need to call to display the post. So if somebody else is interested in getting the post, they can simply call this function. And instead of this, they can call some other function, right? Display post for Android, display post for iPad, display post for uh, whatever, like, you know, Apple Watch, Apple TV, or whatever they want to do. So this gives you more control when you create your smaller functions and your functions are doing just one and one job. And you will see in the future that when you create smaller functions that are just doing one and one job only, then they become more reusable.
you can call the function, it will return you something. You can call another function, it will return you something. It will have no side effects because they're just doing one and only one job. So this is extremely important that whenever you're writing a function, make sure that that function is just doing one and one thing only. Okay, if you like this video and want to check out the complete course, then check out the link in the YouTube description. This video was part of my complete course, Writing Clean Code, Implementing Maintainable, Readable, and Easy to Understand Code in any programming language. So you can use this course if you are doing a C-sharp development, JavaScript development, Java, Kotlin, Dart, Python, Ruby on Rails, whatever you're doing, you can use this course. You can see it's a four hour course and it goes over many different things, including naming, function, comments, objects, data structure, unit testing, classes, and so much more. After completing this course, you will learn all the different principles and techniques to refactor your code and write clean code. Check out the link in the YouTube description and enjoy the course. Thank you so much.